I want to take a look at Holland America and look at the good and the bad, the best and the worst, the pros and cons. In my view, Holland America is perfect for people who like a traditional cruising experience. And you're not going to find things like rope courses and go-karts and all the resort type features you find on many of the big mega ships. It really focused on the dining experience, the bars, the lounges, enrichment, pools. So it's pretty traditional in its offerings on board. So if you want a pretty classical cruise ship with classical type of features, this is perfect for you. It's not a party ship, it's not a crazy ship, it's relatively quiet and refined. So it's a pretty classical experience. The entertainment on board, you're gonna find, again, it's pretty classic cruising fare. You're gonna have quizzes, trivia, enrichment, production shows. You're able to do different things like go to learn how to use technology. So all in all, a pretty classical experience. Another big plus of cruising with Holland America is pretty much anywhere in the world you want to go, at some point of time, you'll find Holland America goes there during the course of the year. They go everywhere. They have, at the time of recording, 14 ships. They actually got more ships on order, but they go all over the place. So you can go to places as far afield as Alaska, which is where they are incredibly well established, Asia, Australasia, New Zealand, right around Europe, South America, the Caribbean, the Panama Canal, you can go on grand voyages. If there's somewhere you want to go in the world, you probably can go there on Holland America. For me, I think one of the big pluses of cruising on Holland America is the thing they've created called the Music Walk. Now, depending on what ship you're on, they will either have all of the venues or some of the venues. So the more recent the ship, the more likely they are to have all of the venues. But the Music Walk is a series of curated music experiences that really kick off, particularly on sea days, but in the evenings you're gonna have those. So you've got the Lincoln Center Stage. This is a partnership with the famous New York venue, and you'll have classical concerts here. You then have B.B. King's Blues Club, where they have an eight-piece band and singing incredible funky music, really, really popular. It's one of the most popular of all. Another one that's incredibly popular is Billboard On Board. Here you have two pianists, they face each other and they do different sets during the evening, which might focus on British Invasion or One Hit Wonders, all sorts of different types of themes. And it's incredibly popular. You'll find loads and loads of people crowding around the piano whenever they're on. And it's really, really good fun. A lot of the ships now, particularly the new ships, also have another great venue, which is called the Rolling Stone Rock Room. It's a partnership with the Rolling Stone magazine, and as the name suggests, it's rock music. And what normally happens across these venues is they are scheduled across the evening with different slots, so you can pretty much go from venue to venue, and at the next time slot, they'll be kicking up with the next venue. So I do think that the music walk is a big plus. Another part of the music walk, which they include in the story, is the world stage. And this is the main theater where they will have all sorts of production shows, you know, the sort of Las vegas -y Broadway style review show, guest artists, that kind of thing. In recent years, I think one of the real big pluses that has happened on Holland America is their approach and the way that they look at the whole excursions area. What they did, which was quite a bold move at the time, is the crow's nest on their ships they converted into Exploration Central, or EXC as it's known. And in here you have a whole bunch of things. So this is where they've put the shore excursions team, so you have the EXE guides, which are the people that can help you, give you lots of advice. What they also created are these interactive tables where you can go take a look at your itinerary and port by port will give you maps. It'll tell you a little bit about the port, the main attractions and the excursions that are available. It's really good fun sort of scrolling through those and exploring your whole trip. They also have this big interactive screen where you can go and they'll ask you different questions every day and build up a profile and you can learn about your fellow travelers. Also in there, there's normally some travel books, sort of a library as well that you can go to. Also linked to XC is another couple of things which they've done. So they've put a lot of effort to this. So they have the EXE channel on your in-room television where you can watch documentaries. They have a partnership with Athar, the travel magazine, where they've done lots of port guides. And so you can basically watch videos around the whole port. They have EXE talks, port talks which are run very specific to your cruise, which you can obviously go and listen to live. They also record those and run those on the interactive television. They then have a whole bunch of other new things which are relatively recent, certainly at the time of recording. They have like an EXE kind of cultural thing where they bring, depending on your cruise, they'll bring local people on board 
if there's a way to immerse you into the culture. They've also got EXE port to table and this is their latest iteration of cooking demonstrations where they will show you how to make food from all around the world, telling you the story and the background to the dishes. So that's really good fun as well. They've also started to focus more on photography. So they, on many of the ships, they may run EXE photography, which is helping you learn how to take great travel pictures when you're out and about. And then of course, linked to some of the excursions. So what's then are some of the cons, the less good things about cruising with Honda America? Now, of course, for some people, things that could be cons are pros, some of the pros are cons, but this is just my version. So let's take a look at the four things that I think are more the downsides of cruising with Holland America. The first of these is true for all cruise lines in the sort of premium category, and that's the fact that the fares aren't all inclusive, and you will find there are potentially quite a lot of on costs once you get on board the ship. So let's take a look, first of all, at what is included in the fare. First of all, the fare will include your accommodation, obviously. Secondly, it will include your food. Now you can eat pretty much 24 hours a day, including your fares. So you'll find there's the main dining room and that will have breakfast, lunch, or dinner most days. And for dinner, you can have an early seating, a late seating, or anytime dining. There's also on the ships a buffet restaurant, which is a very nice buffet restaurant, actually with very high quality food. You'll have a couple of informal dining options, which are also included in the fare. So on the bigger ships, you'll have dive-in, which is sort of the burger place, which you get burgers, hot dogs, which is normally open at lunchtime. And on some of the bigger ships, you'll also have a pizza place, slice of pizza as well. Then you have 24 hour room service and afternoon tea. So that's all the food that's included. Access to pretty much all the facilities with the exception of the cabanas, which is a little private quiet area that you can hire on sea days or in fact on port days, which is where you can go and sort of relax a little quiet space out in the sun in little cabanas away from the main swimming pools. But pretty much all the facilities you can go to and they are all included. All the entertainment is included, so everything on the daily program, the production shows or the guest artists in the evening. The other thing that's included is the kids program. So they have Club How, which caters for kids from relatively young up to sort of teenage age, and that's all included within the fair. The enrichment programs, all the talks, that's all included within the fair. So as you can see, there's quite a lot included, but what's not included, and these can actually mount up. Gratuities are not included, and then normally auto added on if you haven't prepaid those. Excursions are not included, of course. They are extra cost. And of course, excursions can mount up quite a lot. Drinks are not included. You will get some basic drinks, like you know, some regular tea, coffee, water, and things like iced tea, perhaps lemonade in the buffet restaurant and the main dining room. But actual main drinks, sort of premium drinks, premium coffees, alcoholic drinks are not included. You can buy various drinks packages. Wi-Fi is not included, and like on all cruise ships, Wi-Fi can actually mount up quite a lot. Again, you can buy packages. Speciality dining is also not included. Now on Holland America, there are four main speciality dining venues. You won't find all of them on all of the ships, but you'll normally have Pinnacle Grill, which is their real sort of signature restaurant, especially a dining restaurant, and that's their steak restaurant. You do pay to go to that. You then have Rudy Saldemeyer, which is their fish evening, which is a pop-up restaurant held in the Pinnacle Grill. You then have on many of the ships, Tamarind, which is my favorite of all of these restaurants, which is like an Asian fusion restaurant. Again, it's not on all of the ships. And then you also have Canaletto, which is an Italian restaurant, and that uses part of the Lido restaurant, the buffet restaurant in the evenings. Then of course, as you'd expect, all the discretionary stuff, so if you use the medical center, the shops, gambling, the casino, all that kind of stuff is not included. So that is a downside. It's not an all-inclusive fare, but again, it is pretty consistent across all of the premium cruise lines. The second downside for many people is the whole area of dress code. Now, actually, the dress code on Hello America, in my view, is pretty relaxed versus some lines. So they do have gala evenings where they do ask you to dress up, but actually that's not that strict. So you could actually, on a gala evening, if you're a gentleman, actually go into the restaurant with a long sleeved, you know, collared shirt on, smart slacks. You don't have to wear tuxedos and suits. A lot of people do like to do that, but you don't have to. So although there's a dress code, it's not massively strict. You can actually, on regular evenings, wear smart jeans. You can't wear shorts and scruffy jeans and that kind of stuff into the restaurant. So although there's a dress code, it's not a massively strict dress code but it's not completely and utterly anything goes. So there is kind of a, a dress code. And depending on the cruise you're on, people may adhere to it more or less. So if you're in a hot climate, pretty informal, like the Caribbean, you'll find people perhaps 
are on the lower end of the formality of dress code, but there is a dress code that you do need to follow and stick to. But again, it's not that strict. Now, the fourth area that some people argue is a downside of Honda America, but I actually think, in my view, it's not a massive downside because it's really just related to who it appeals to. But Honda America is definitely a slightly older crowd. So you're talking really 50s, 60s, 70s kind of crowd. It's very much couples. It's quite an American spin, although it has lots of Brits, lots of Australians and increasingly more and more nationalities on board. But it is a more traditional kind of cruising because it is a traditional cruising experience. So it attracts that kind of cruiser. You do find though increasingly, particularly in the summer periods, you'll find more and more families are coming on board, particularly multi-generational families. And you, they do cater for kids, as I mentioned, because they do have the whole Club Howl program. And it's a pretty big club for kids and teenagers. So certainly in those peak holiday periods, it is a much more diverse crowd on board. But generally speaking, sort of out of those peak holiday times, it is a slightly older, more traditional cruising crowd. The other thing that people would argue is that overall, in terms of the quality, the service, it's very similar to other premium lines. So I think that's very true. The food is very, I think, very high quality. There's lots of choice, but it is on the other premium lines. Service is good. It's efficient. Staff's very friendly, but that's true of other premium lines. So I think in many ways, it matches the other premium lines in that aspect. However, I think if you are looking for a traditional cruising experience, you're really into music and the music walk really appeals to you a lot and you're very into destinations, learning about enrichment and that kind of stuff, then I think Colin America you'll find very appealing because they do have a really big focus on making sure you're well educated about the destinations, the excursion options, and then they bundle around that whole other kind of enrichment stuff. So you've got the Microsoft workshops and all sorts of other things like that going on right throughout the daily program where you can learn and enrich yourself as well. So that are, I think are the great things and some could argue the less great things. As I mentioned, some of those things you will see as positive, some of the positives you may see as negatives, but that's trying to see the two sides of the story. Holland America, when I've cruised on it, I've had a great time. I've had lots and lots of really great trips on Holland America and I'm looking forward to going back on Holland America again. I really do enjoy my time on board. I have loads more videos about Holland America and cruising. So why don't you watch another one of those right now.